Good morning, everybody. I hope you can hear me OK. Uh, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. Um, let's, there we go. That's me. Hopefully you can all see the screen OK. It seems to be working my end properly. Um, that's me, Gareth Jones. Uh, well, the Imperial Cities by train, Berlin, Vienna, Prague and more by Railbookers. Um, First thing I'd like everyone to do is uh, on the control bar on the right hand side, there should be a little area. It says questions, if you wouldn't mind just popping a little note in there saying hello. Uh, let me know where you're tuning in from. It'd be great to find out where you are in the world. I'm up in York myself. It is a bit chilly today, I will say. Um, but more than anything, just to make sure you can all hear me OK, you can all see the screen OK. See, as I said, it seems to be running uh, as it should be my side of things, but um, I've had some horrible experiences in the past of wittering onto myself for a good 10-15 minutes before people chime in to say, they, should they be able to hear anything? Ah, oh, wonderful. Thank you ever so much, everybody. Lots and lots of people. There we go. Paul uh, in Reading, Alison, Cheltenham, oh, Peter in South Wales. Thanks, Peter. Thanks for tuning in. Wonderful. Thanks, everybody. Uh, Greg in San Francisco, California. Wonderful. I think you win the furthest away, Greg. Thanks for tuning in. I hope things are going well in the Sunshine State. Um, Let's get cracking, shall we? Let's begin. So, ah, uh, oh, Lucerne in South Africa. Blimey, in Melbourne. Well, Bonnie wins, Bonnie wins. And Carol wins. We've got Bonnie and Carol tuning in from Australia. Thanks very much, guys. Good evening. I hope you're doing well. Um, let's have a look at some holidays in Europe. Uh, something to look forward to, shall we say. Uh, what are we going to cover today? Well, of course, we're going to look at some amazing rail holidays across Europe. We... Uh, looking at the imperial cities, particularly, of course, referring to Vienna, Prague, Budapest. Uh, we're also going to be looking further afield. We're going to have a little look at um, a bit of uh, Poland. We're also actually going to dip into Italy a bit as well. And we're also going to find out about a bit more about Railbookers. Um, if you're all, and many of you familiar with Railbookers, sorry, probably going on some stuff that you've heard already. But if not, if you're new to Railbookers, it's good to get an idea of who we are, what we do. Um, when we're going to look at what European rail looks like what it looks like traveling by train in europe at the moment you know what a european rail operator is doing to maintain a safe environment for everybody okay so as i said rail bookers and um, why do travelers love rail because what do we do who are we and um, bucket list experiences for special occasions now by that i don't just mean amazing things like the venice St. Plon orange express the private trains the golden eagle across uh, russia etc I mean, just some truly unique experiences by train and um, going to an amazing array of destinations, over 3000 different cities and destinations throughout Europe and the world that we cover. Um, part of the joy of traveling by train is just being able to access areas of land that you can't access any other way. Um, in the US, for example, the California Zephyr, you can't get through that landscape any other way apart from train or uh by horse perhaps um your helicopter that's it really. freedom and flexibility you're not part of a group it's all independent travel uh so you have the um freedom to do what you want obviously you've got to abide by when your trains are booked for when your hotels are booked for any tours that you might book the details of those tours the starting time but the rest of the time you're up to your own devices you decide where you go for lunch you decide where you go for dinner it's your holiday uh, the scenic way to travel, we've touched on it already. You're all tuning into a Railbookers webinar. I'm sure you all appreciate the joys of travelling by train and being able to appreciate the scenery as you go along rather than being squashed into a coach or squashed into an aeroplane where you can't see anything. Uh, a key this, I think, that all our journeys are customizable. I'm never sure about that word customizable, but basically it means all of our holidays are flexible. Um, we start them any day, every day possible throughout the year. So there's no, generally, unless there are certain seasons where the train doesn't run, uh, Venice St. Florence Express, for example, but all the other trains, you can go any day of the year. We'll look at a handful of holidays today. We have thousands of different holiday itineraries. If you want to chop them and change them, absolutely. That's what we're here to help you to do. If you've been to any of the destinations before, you can take those out. You can add in a destination. You can alter the change of uh, change in dates, uh, nights spent in a destination. Um, you can obviously upgrade any of the journeys to first class if you'd rather travel in a little bit of space and comfort. We have hundreds of great hotel partners in all the major destinations, so you can choose between a selection of hotels as well. Completely flexible. 
uh, deposit now, pay later. We um, we're proud that we offer very small deposit levels, um, generally £150 per person if there's any flights involved, a little more, but really low deposits and then the remaining balance isn't due until three months prior to your trip, um, which I think is amazing considering that we can book your holiday two years in advance. We're taking bookings for October 2022 at this stage. Um, just a small deposit uh, secures everything in the in the booking and then you don't pay anything until three months prior um on the flip side of that coin of course though is if you're looking to get away a little sooner uh who knows hopefully in the uk particularly they're gonna um not sure really but see things improve uh especially coming into the early part of next year we're able to get everything but get all the travel documentation sent out everything in place up to two days prior to travel anytime any day anywhere uh, wherever you are in the world with Railbookers you can uh, call an emergency number and get through to any of our staff in one of our uh, offices worldwide everyone is working from home nowadays of course but that doesn't kind of take away the service we offer London um, two offices in the US Beverly and uh, Laguna Hills south of Los Angeles Toronto and Sydney Australia wherever you are in the world you can call an emergency number at any time. Any of our staff will be able to assist you. On the control bar on the right hand side, uh, just above, I think it is above the questions area, there's an area that says handouts. If you pop in there, there should be a map that looks like that. If it's not there, don't worry. I'll make sure one is emailed to you all as well. Um, it comes as a PDF and then you can just sort of right click and save it or print it off. It's quite a nice map to have I think um, all those different colour lines of different rail operators we as it says we do take the mystery out of it we know the most scenic routes the best connections uh, the, the best places to stop off on the way those sort of things so it's quite a nice thing just to pop on your fridge in the kitchen I think and then in the morning sort of dream about travelling by train in the future um, there's just a handful of our the direct rail partnerships we have around the world and um, we have direct booking systems with all the rail partners uh, all the rail operators we have access to the seats before they're made available to the public and uh, should touch on the maximum flexibility offer we've got in place this year so any new reservations uh, you're able to change the date of travel or postpone your trip essentially up to five days prior to departure and um, without incurring any amendment fees. There's no change fee from ourselves. And so that's for any bookings made up until the end of the year. And I also want to let you know some very good limited offers we have in place at the moment. So uh, any holidays to Vienna, Scotland or Switzerland, uh four nights or more will save 300 pounds per couple don't worry if you're traveling on your own you still get 150 pound savings so it's a really good saving um italy by the alps seven nights or more save 400 pounds per couple and the italian lakes and swiss mountains amazing holiday which it does what it says on the tin you start in rome you go up past like Lake majority lake como and then up the Benina express into switzerland lots of things in switzerland as well 500 pounds per couple saving as mentioned at the start of the webinar well, we're gonna, what what does it look like traveling by train at the moment well of course it's changing uh, week by week really it does depend on whereabouts you are traveling in europe so of course pretty much everybody's saying wear a mask uh, wear a mask on stations and on trains passengers, passengers and staff Food and drink on board trains, it really depends where you are again. Um, in Germany and to Eastern Europe, because this, where it's a buffet car, you still can have order freshly cooked food uh, from the buffet cars and so there. And um, going into Italy and France, no. Um, but I think one of the important things to note here is traveling by train. You don't have the restrictions in place as you would do flying, for example. You can take a picnic with you. You can take a bottle of wine with you and enjoy whilst you're sat there um, traveling to far off places. Now, of course, it's very, very difficult to have a glass of wine, a picnic whilst wearing a mask. But we must dream of these things and look forward to being able to do these things perhaps without wearing a mask. Um, changing seat configuration and allocation on board to allow for social distancing. 
less obvious in first class and becoming less obvious as well in it's interesting in france where the um the unions have a bit more power than they do elsewhere in the world the unions have backed the government in saying okay you can run the trains at 100 percent capacity if you need to so they can if you can run they are running some of the tgb trains 100 percent capacity in italy they tried to do the same thing but the italian government said no so they have to running up to 60 percent capacity you'll find the odd the other seats sort of left open um one thing that is prevalent though is a one-way system so one of the doors at the end of the carriage where you get is where you get on the train and the other door at the end of the carriage is where everybody gets off the train so no sort of bumping into people along the way <clears throat> of course there's increased cleaning and sanitation so people cleaning the train on whilst the journey is uh, running not just at the start and the end of the trip and contactless ticket control, uh, essentially an e-ticket on your phone or your tablet. Now, if they have any technical problems and are able to do that, we will, of course, we can, of course, send out a physical printing, print off a bit of paper of the barcode, whatever you need. Um, so yeah, no problem on board. Let's have a look at some holidays, shall we? First up, Vienna city break, nice and simple. Um, how do you get to Vienna by train? I hear you ask. Like, well, you take a sleeper train. You do from London. Well, from London, you from London through to Brussels or Cologne. It depends which day of the week now, interestingly enough. And then there's a direct overnight train uh, through to Vienna. Um, at currently, two days a week, it goes direct from Brussels. The rest of the time, it goes direct from Cologne. Um, it's an easy, just under two hours, direct high-speed train between Brussels and Cologne. And the great thing about it is in Cologne particularly, uh, is the stations right next to the Cologne Dom. Um, amazing, huge, great medieval cathedral before the Empire State Building was built. That was the tallest building in the world, believe it or not. Um, and you can actually have a couple of hours in Cologne. So leave your luggage at the station, left luggage lockers, uh, go off and enjoy some dinner and then get on the sleeper train for a good night's sleep through to Vienna. There's no restaurant car on board the sleeper train. Um, two nights in Vienna, um, you get a hop on hop off sightseeing tour as well to get around and see all that amazing architecture. And then the price 739 per person includes a flight back from Vienna to the UK. You don't have to fly back to London, uh, you fly back to any airport in the UK. If you'd rather take the train, absolutely, that's where that sort of flexible, customizable side comes in. Um, you could take the sleeper train back again, which is quite nice to see. The sleeper train leaves in the evening, so you get that full third day essentially in Vienna. Uh, wake up in Cologne or Brussels, you'll be in London by two o'clock in the afternoon the next day. Uh, of course, you combine it with a trip elsewhere, so Vienna to Munich or Vienna to Zurich in Switzerland overnight and then come back the following day. Um, Vienna is it's a wonderful, wonderful city, Vienna. So beautiful, not just the architecture. Get up to the um, Schönbrunn Palace, huge, great gardens there, and obviously the classics of um, the classical music, the shows they have actually in the, in the Schönbrunn Palace are quite something. Um, the sleeper, though, let's have a look at the sleeper train. Now, it's, it's very hard to get images of. <laughs> Sleeper trains and what it's like on board sleeper trains. So you, I mean, you can ignore the image of the the ibex or the deer, and you don't find that in too many of the sleeper trains. But this is an idea of the actual sort of sizing and things. So this will be a four berth. You see the ladder going up. There is a bit of storage for bags and things in there as well. Um, I think this one gives it a better sort of image. This is a two berth. So if there's just the two of you, um, it starts off seating like that. There's no dinner included, but you do get breakfast. That's what the guys in the top left-hand corner are being served there. Um, but then in the evening, those seats is the, kind of just above their head, folds down into the top bunk, and then there's the lower bunk as well. I mean, the great thing about traveling by sleeper train, particularly in the current world, is you've got that social distancing thing taken into account. You know, it's your own private cabin. Um, and nowadays they wouldn't you know the, the steward would be able to kind of hand you your breakfast in the morning there you go rather than coming in and presenting it to you like that essentially but it's your own space um there are deluxe cabins on board as well where you get a toilet facility in the cabin there's only three cabins uh which are deluxe on each train so it's really limited availability 
but it's really worth going for because the actual difference in overall cost isn't that great at all. It's going to be around about sort of 10, 20 pounds per person. But again, these things, it's, this is where it's key to getting in there as early as possible to get those book books that are limited in numbers. Um, so yeah, you can get the kind of cabin, the single cabin, solo cabins for one, two or three or the four berths as before. before. You don't get the four berth deluxe with the ensuite, so you only get the two or the ones ensuite. Um, it's such a great romantic way of traveling, so function as well, leaving in the evening, arriving in the morning. Very clean, very modern interior as well. Next, something a bit bigger. So the grand Berlin, Prague, Vienna and Budapest. Um, any holiday where you see called grand um, essentially means it's first class travel throughout now, wherever possible. What do you get for first class travel? I hear you ask. Again, it depends where you are, it depends which train you want. The, the Eurostar, London to Brussels, Paris, Lille, Amsterdam now as well. Um, standard Premier is what they call the first class. You do get meal and drink included there. And they have actually bought that service back recently. Uh, it's certainly kind of toned down a little, but it is still better. It's better than food on an air, airplane, airplane, to be honest with you. Um, that they, have, they have brought that back into Standard Premier, so you get meal included now. Through Germany, Eastern Europe, uh, there's no meal included, but the seats are certainly a lot bigger. You've got more luggage space. There's fewer seats in each carriage, so much more legroom, much more space for social distancing as well. OK. Here, London to Berlin in one day, um, change in Brussels, change in Cologne. Leave London around about nine o'clock in the morning. You'll be in Berlin about 8, 30, 9 o'clock that day. Um, it's a long journey, but I mean, you're traveling Eurostar and then German ICE trains, incredibly comfortable. You see the German countryside pass by. Uh, two nights in Berlin, um, you've got a walking tour there as well. Great way to see the city. Down to Prague for two nights, direct train to Vienna for two nights, and then direct train to Budapest, two nights in Budapest as well. And again, the price includes the flight back uh, for starting £1,550 per person. If you don't want to take the the flight back, of course, why not go back to Vienna and jump on the sleep train back to, to Brussels or Cologne? You could do that by all means. You could take a train, uh, sleep train to Munich and then Munich back up as well. There's plenty of options, variations in terms of coming back by train. Uh, Berlin, fantastic city, really, really amazing. The walking tour is a great way of getting to know the city as well. I've always, I've been to Berlin many times. I ran the marathon there many years ago. It's, it's, I mean, you've got the Brandenburg Gate, you've got Checkpoint Charlie, of course, but there aren't really many landmarks as such. You can Paris, the Eiffel Tower, the Sacre Coeur, et cetera. Um, and the walking tour is a brilliant way just to get a firmer un understanding of, you know, the, the different East and West, which where was East and where was West, uh, the, the, the actual sort of history behind the streets in Berlin. Um, Really great city, so much interest, just obviously modern history there. It's great. Um, hop off, hop, hom, hop on, hop off. It's too early at the moment, another cup of tea, I think. Hop on, hop off, sightseeing tour in Prague and in Vienna. Um, the brilliant ways of just getting around the city. Uh, both of them, the architecture is amazing. Almost, you, you know, you're walking around with a map in your hand or on your phone trying to find your way to somewhere. You're not looking around, at least with the hop on hop off, you get to see the major sites jump off, but you also get to take in the amazing scenery that you're uh, passing as well. The amazing architecture, the amazing buildings. And then the, the, the last night you've got on the holiday, you've got a Danube river cruise in Budapest. So you actually get onto the river with drinks, um, which I mean, that's just an image of the Hungarian parliament building, which is it's really, it's one of the most beautiful buildings in, the, in Europe, if not the world, I'd say. Um, Budapest is beautiful, one of my favorite cities, actually getting on the river. So you've got the Hungarian parliament on one side, you've got the um, castle on the other, the fisherman's bastion as well, on the other side of the river. Beautiful. And it's a really lovely way just to kind of sign off your holiday with drinks, little cruise down the river and back again.
Uh, right, next, the Arlberg Pass, um, really historic route through the Alps. Um, here, Zurich, Salzburg and Vienna. Uh, we're taking the train out this time via Paris and then Paris direct TGV to Zurich. In Paris, if you're, if you're unaware, you've got to change stations. So the Eurostar comes in, into Gare Nord, those trains heading east from Gare de Lyon. Um, we leave sufficient good hour and a half at least to get between the stations and send you directions how to do it. It's an actually easy two stops on the metro or you will provide you with a private car if you'd rather have someone pick you up and drop you off at the station. We can do that. Uh, overnight in Zurich, um, really lovely city, Zurich. If you are flexible, you get a bit more time. It's worth spending a full day in Zurich, so having two nights there, uh, particularly down by the lake in the old town is lovely. You can even do a quick kind of half an hour's train journey out to the Rhine Falls, the biggest waterfalls in Europe. So there's plenty to do there. But then you've got a journey through the Arlberg Pass, so amazing mountainous scenery, um, Salzburg for two nights and then up to Vienna for three nights. Again, the price is based on the flight back to the UK. But if you want to take the train, of course, you've got the sleeper train route back to Cologne and Brussels. That gives you an idea of the sort of scenery you see in the Arlberg Pass. Obviously, it's open all year round, so spring, summer and winter. Of course, during the winter, you're going to get a lot of snow covered mountains, real kind of wintry scenery. And as well as Vienna, which we've looked at already, you've got the joys of Salt Zurich, as said, and Salzburg. Zurich, we've got some great hotels there. There's one called St. Gotthard that's just exact, just over the road from the train station. So right, again, arriving there, you haven't got far to go to get to the hotel, drop your bags off, and then off you go to enjoy some dinner in the old town. And Salzburg, we've got a great partner in Salzburg. So you take care of Sound of Music tour or even a little day trip down to Halstatt. Uh, it should be beautiful as well. So it's really flexible in terms of what we're able to offer there. Next, as mentioned, we're going to, can we even go to, go to Poland as well. Um, again, taking that same route, the, the, the daytime uh, travel by train to Berlin, two nights in Berlin, and then down to Prague, and then Prague over to Krakow and up to Warsaw, two nights in each. Uh, price including the flight back, just under £900 per person. Uh, again, you've got the hop on, hop off tour in Prague, which is a brilliant way of getting around, particularly going to Prague Castle, which is quite a steep climb. Um, but the salt mines in Krakow and a half day walking tour in Warsaw as well. I think Krakow, I believe, is the largest historic, the actual kind of old town area is designated to be an official old town area in the world. Um, beautiful kind of medieval city centre. Of course, if you want to do a half day tour out to Auschwitz as well, we can include that absolutely. And Warsaw, the beautiful, beautiful medieval buildings again. And then, as mentioned, we're looking, we can get down to Venice as well. So here, Venice and Vienna via the Alps, um, combining one of the kind of prettiest uh, rail journeys, one of the scenic rail journeys, um, the Simplon Pass into Italy, between Switzerland and Italy. So here, London, Paris, Paris, down to Lausanne. Every night in Lausanne, lovely, lovely place, Lausanne. Uh, again, one of those places where if you want to spend an extra night, it's really worthwhile. There's so much to do there. You get to the Olympic Museum, but highly recommended and very easy to do is a little cruise on uh, Lake Geneva. Only about an hour's cruise down, you're in Montreux. Um, you can even just pop to Chillon Castle, a, a, a beautiful medieval castle right on the lake. Um, some amazing vineyards in that area as well. So it's certainly worth spending some time there. If not, train leaves Lausanne around about sort of half past eight in the morning, direct train through to Venice via the Simplon Pass. It is stunning through the Swiss Alps. Carson, well, have a look at some images in a minute, passing Lake Maggiore, et cetera. Two nights in Venice and then up to Vienna for two nights, direct train. There's a direct train, takes around about sort of six and a half hours. Um, 
you can if you want as well just a quick change means you go via the amazing Semmering Pass uh, which is an amazingly historic piece of uh, amazing historic route uh, amazing piece of engineering to be able to get over this beautiful pass two nights in Vienna and then guess what absolutely we're on the sleeper train back to Cologne and Brussels and then back to the UK the following morning uh, in Venice though you've got walking tour and gondola tour included as well uh, and then a Vienna pass in Vienna to get into I think it's around about 40 different um, attractions, palaces, going out to Schönbrunn Palace. You even get to go on the uh, Birdman Ferris wheel as well. I always forget the name of it, but yeah, full of attractions. Lots of those museums, the Spanish Riding School as well, you get to go to in Vienna. It's included in that Vienna Pass. So this is the kind of scenery you see on the Simplon Pass. It's, it is where the name Venice Simplon Orange Express gets the Simplon bit from. It's the old historic route. So you drop down from the Swiss Alps. Uh, this is Lake Maggiore, and this is taken from the train. So you get an idea of how close you are to the lake. You kind of skirts around there through Milan and then on to Venice. You skirt around Lake Garda a little bit before you drop down into Venice. And that route as well, you can get anywhere in Italy. Uh, Milan is the gateway to Italy. So you kind of get change trains in Milan out to Rome, Florence, Sicily, Sorrento, uh, anywhere. Well, I hope that's uh, taken your fancy a little bit. I hope that's helped. Um, but please let me know which of those, if any, you'd be, you'd be uh, particularly interested in travelling to. Please do let me know. Oh, wow, that's great to hear. That's really lovely to hear. You've been managed to a, a 14 day European tour. Amazing. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm glad. Yeah, we do try to be as flexible as possible, particularly things on time. So. I'm glad to hear it's planning on going ahead and yeah, happy birthday for within the next three weeks or so. So everybody, if you've if you've enjoyed this and found it helpful, um please don't forget we run these every week now. Um next week there's Italy by trains, top five holidays to Italy. Um two weeks time Scotland with rail bookers um, unsurprisingly it's been one of our most popular destinations this year and we've got some great holiday packages going up to the Highlands of course the West Highland Line the Jacobite train um, Edinburgh Glasgow and then the 3rd of November top five holidays via the Alps are going via Switzerland and elsewhere and now it's questions please do uh, make use of the questions area and let me know if I've missed anything out or any questions you might have either relating to what we've looked at today or just in general please do let me know I'm here to help Oh, Mandy, great question. Yeah, suitable for young adults. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No reason why not. I mean, I think Budapest is a really, really amazing destination. Uh, full stop. You've got not just the classic kind of historical side of things and the architecture, but things like the Chesney Baths are great fun. Um, the cruise is also kind of child friendly as well. Um, it's just, I think traveling by train is quite exciting as well. You know, I think teenagers find that sort of have that adventurous side to it, which traveling by train across Europe certainly has had a little bit of that in mind as well, I think as well. Yeah. Uh, in Vienna as well, for example, where I mentioned the big Ferris wheel. I wish I could remember the name of the park. Is it Pratten, Pratterberg, Pratten, Pratten, I don't know if it is, but yeah, historic um, theme park right in the heart of Vienna. It's not a big flashy theme park or anything like that, but classic kind of rides and things. So yeah, it's loads to do. Or month long tours in include Russia. Uh, we can do absolutely. I mean, we'd certainly kind of we go to Russia by all means. So we've got some wonderful packages combining Russia with Scandinavia. Um, of course, we do the Golden Eagle, the cross, um, 
luxury train across Russia. We also do do the standard, you know, the Trans-Siberian Express or the Trans-Mongolian Express, so the normal trains going across there. Um, absolutely, yeah. I mean, if you have a particular itinerary in mind or places you'd like to see, by all means, give us a call. That's what I mean about the flexible side of things. We can put something together for you. I'm sure we'll be able to make something like that. Yeah. Is there a possibility to do independence in Vienna going to stay? Yeah, absolutely, by all means. I mean, the only thing we have to say, we have to sell train travel with accommodation somewhere along the line. So if you're combining Vienna with another destination where we would need a hotel accommodation and the train travel, absolutely, we can do that. And then you would be able to, um, absolutely, then you can just say, well, take out the accommodation in Vienna and you can stay with your friends, no problem at all. But one thing we can't do is sell train tickets on their own, just simply because we have an agreement with all the rail operators. We have special fares that are reduced as well, so we're not able to offer the train travel on its own. We have to sell it in conjunction with hotel accommodation somewhere along the line, but it doesn't have to be a hotel accommodation ever along the line. Sorry, Laurie. Absolutely. Yeah, Laurie makes a good point. Forgive me for not reading out the questions first. Um, ideally, just ask if it's possible to be independent once in Vienna, so to go and stay with friends once there, it's there. How about Helsinki? Absolutely, yeah. But there is a wonderful, um, oh, what's it called? Blimey, a testing manager. Um, a high speed train line between Helsinki and St. Petersburg. Um, it's the Russian name for the Peregrine Falcon. Um, and I, for the life of me, I can't remember what the name is. But yes, we include Helsinki with our Scandinavian holidays. So you could um, take the ferry over from Stockholm to Helsinki overnight, ferry. Wake up in Helsinki and then take the direct train over to St. Petersburg if need be. Great question, Mandy. What grading of hotels are available? We lose three star and four star on average. It depends on the destination, uh, but we do have a selection of hotels in all the destinations, range of three, four, and five star. Um, on average, it's a Four star hotel in Vienna, for example. The hotel we mainly use is called the Hotel Zeitgeist, which is really close to the station, the main station. So it's nice and easy. Um, Budapest, the Continental Hotel, which again is a four star hotel. And he's, yes, absolutely, there's, there is, and there's a selection of hotels to choose from. So the holiday packages are, of course, based on a particular hotel. That's where we're able to put the pricing from. But if the if that hotel is not available, we have a selection of other hotels for you to choose from. Or if you do have a particular hotel in mind yourself, by all means, let us know, because we may work with them directly already as well. The Allegro, the train between Helsinki and St. Petersburg. Forgive me, <laughs> finally came back to me, the Allegro. <laughs> Maria, thank you very much for the warm feedback. I'm glad you found it helpful. Um, Scotland, yes, it's been very, very popular this year and it's such a wonderful country. It offers so much, it really does. Uh, could I explain again about food? Are we allowed to bring our own food uh, picnic, for example, if no dinner? So absolutely, yes, that is one of the joys of traveling by train is there's not really a huge amount of restrictions on board. So you can take a picnic on board with you. Um, heading out to um, 
France, Vienna, Budapest, the buffet or restaurant car on those trains is generally still open. So you're still a lot often able to get a freshly cooked meal on those trains. And in Germany, the buffet cars are still open. So you can still get go there and get something to eat, curry burst or something. Um, in first class, the food is served to your seat as well. It's not included in the cost, but somebody will come along like a waiter at your seat and bring the food to your seat. But you can, of course, as well, uh, take a picnic on board with you. It's one of the great things of leaving London by train is the Marks and Spencers just over the, the, uh, the concourse from the Eurostar terminal at St Pancras is now open again. So you can pick up some nibbles, a bottle of wine if you wish, or, you know, sandwiches, and off you go. There's no restrictions in terms of taking a picnic with you. Mandy, great question. Yeah, so in general, what's the price comparison for a train return rather than flight, as in higher or lower? Travelling by train, sadly, it is always slightly higher than flying. There's just a lot more costs in, 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 involved in terms of the rail operators uh, running their trains, particularly if it's a longer journey where you've got to make connections with different rail operators than airlines are able to offer. So travelling by train, the return leg by train is generally a little bit more expensive than flying. That's why we always advertise with the flight because it's a better price. Um, for most of the holiday packages, we do have two different plans on the website. So for the Grand Berlin Prague Vienna Vienna Budapest holiday, which we we went through, um, there'll be two different plans on the website. So if you find it on the website, there'll be an air and rail, which is the rail out and the flight back, and then a rail return, which will be with the train back as well. All right, well, thank you very much, everybody. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Um, thanks for joining me again. Any questions you might have, don't hesitate in giving me a call. Or us a call, 0203 780 Um Head to the website, railbookers.co.uk. There's lots and lots of kind of amazing, interesting stuff on the website. I think you can get lost in destinations or holiday types and things like that. Or by all means, pop down to your local travel agent as well. They'll know who we are. Thank you ever so much indeed. Um, stay safe, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.